Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Pillow Talk podcast and today we have a very special and a very exciting guest on with us. In a country like ours where any sport other than cricket is never seen as a viable career option, the guest that we have on has actually lived the life that a lot of us have only dreamed of. She is one of the first Indian football players to have ever played for a professional club in the UK. And today we have on with us Miss Tanvi Hunt. So before we dive into the questions, before we try to understand what she, what all she's been through in the process of becoming who she is right now, Tanvi, could you tell us a little bit more about yourself? Um. So the hope is that through the question answer, we you'd be able to <laughs> figure out uh, a little bit about my journey. Uh. But yeah, basically, I'm a Delhi girl. Uh. That's where my story began. Um, sorry. Delhi represent. Yeah, correct. Um, so yeah, I'm actually Punjabi. I was born in Punjab, but grew up in Delhi. Have done all my schooling and undergraduation in Delhi itself. Uh, so yeah, my introduction to football and sport in general happened in Delhi itself. Um, and yeah, that's that's. Uh, I don't want to say too much. Uh, now I'm in Bangalore. It's been a couple of years that I've been in Bangalore. Um, and yeah, I was in London for about three to four years. I uh, did one year masters there um, at Exeter University, which is in the south of England, and then three years um, I played in London as well for a couple of yeah. clubs. Yeah. So before we get into everything and the whole journey, just to set the tone of the interview and just to know whether it's going to be a little passive aggressive from my side or it's going to be very warm and welcoming. Which club do you support? <laughs> Uh, um okay so i have a very diplomatic answer for this not <laughs> no but but the thing is that this diplomatic answer is the actual truth um okay. it's not mm-hmm. it's not to sort of you know give a neutral answer but um you know i'm still playing i'm still in my playing career um mm-hmm. and in fact i didn't grow up watching a lot of football i used to play since a young age but um, mm-hmm. you know when you start following it at a young age you probably grow passionate towards a team uh, i never yeah. watched it until a lot later um and then when i started watching it i watched it from the point of view of um a student of the sport and i right. still mm-hmm. i still till date watch it like that so if i watch any big games or any anything even if it's just local football or whatever i always watch it like as a student of the sport and i generally don't have a favorite team that i support um uh, i do i do have um i honestly don't have a favorite team so i'm not going to name drop or anything um <laughs> but yeah that's that's how i actually still watch football any matches that are happening i won't have a favorite i just and just watch it uh, with so, eager eyes with yeah like a student basically so when when you say that you you watch it as a student are you are you like keeping an eye on certain players making notes as to what they're doing on the field and stuff like that is that true yeah definitely especially players that play obviously positions that are more similar to mine right. um yeah. Yeah. just because the relatability factor obviously things that i could pick up from them uh, learn certain things from them um definitely um that happens quite naturally uh, but as far as like a favorite team is concerned i don't end up leaning towards any one particular team like that yeah I think that's a great way to watch football and you know not your not let yourself get affected by the results. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'll tell you. I'll tell you what though. Um. Obviously, as you watch a match, you do sort of uh, because again, I watch it with eager eyes. I watch it um, you know, with an open mind and everything. But you do clearly have one team. Not always, but yeah. one team mm-hmm. is performing slightly uh better than the other then of course you'd want the result to favor that team but sometimes in football that doesn't always happen so of course emotions mm-hmm. are always involved as well especially when i being a footballer myself uh yeah. but yeah yeah so all right so let, let's just get into it what is like the first proper memory of kicking a ball that you have um so like i said my journey actually began in delhi um mm-hmm. so i studied in basan valley school all the way from nursery to 12th grade um and yeah i've been sporty like all my life ever since i was young i have an older brother he is a year and a half older than me and he was also very nat- mm-hmm. naturally athletic so mm-hmm. me just being around him and his like guy friends and stuff you know i just picked up sports quite easily quite naturally um yeah. and i i had no problem playing with the boys even when i was uh 
you know, about six, seven years old. Um, and I think at the age of about eight is when uh, football was introduced to me. Uh, mm. And I saw my batchmates uh, in school play for the first time. And I absolutely fell in love with the sport. Um, and like I said, I had like a natural flair for sports in general. But with football, mm. the first time that I, you know, got to sort of kick a ball and really get into the sport, um, I just had a very natural connection with the sport. Um, and I instantly knew that it would be my favorite amongst all the sports. Uh, so, yeah, that's that's I think probably eight. Uh, I was eight years old. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, like you mentioned that you you've been in Vasant Valley for your uh, for your schooling days. Yeah. So we came across your interview only where you mentioned that, you know, Vasant Valley School was actually one of the first schools, at least in Delhi, to have an all girls football team. Yeah. So uh, what I wanted to ask was that, did you have a role in cultivating, you know, the culture around girls playing football when the idea of the all girls team was conceived and, you know, as it grew, as it grew over the years? Right. So I don't know if I can take any credit for it, honestly, um, <laughs> because I was yeah. too young. I mean, I wasn't even old enough to be a prefect or anything at that time. So I, I couldn't have had any decision making power, but um, I was certainly one of the first few girls that started playing football in school and possibly. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I think school just noticed a, a few of us sort of pick up the sport over a period of time. Um, and then decided to create a team. Because I remember our first school team uh, when I was in junior school comprised of girls older than me as well, who probably mm -hmm. had more influential roles to play, you know. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I definitely was amongst the first crop of girls that um, that played. Um, what position did you start with in school? Uh, on the wing. Right. So I was traditionally a winger for very, very many years until I went to England. Um so yeah, I uh, right or I think right wing was uh, more where you started. Yeah, was uh, mm -hmm. more where I was placed. Um, but eventually, I did left wing as well. Uh, but yeah, mostly wing because of my speed and um, just my ability to cross and all those things. Yeah. Yeah, like so. I I think to this date, I don't know about like since we graduated like three four years back. I think Vasan Valley is still the most dominant team in the Delhi circuit when it comes to women's football. And and literally everyone, whenever there's a Vasan Valley game going on in our zones, because we're from Deepel Vasant Koins, both of us, and right. we always have the, same, we have the same zone. So right. whenever there's a Vasan Valley girls football match going on, we can always see Vasan Valley thrashing modern DPS 4-0, 5-0. So yeah. I think you starting that, like not like you being a part of the football culture from the very beginning, and uh, probably being the first ones to enter the the game in in Delhi, I think that played a major part. So definitely, um, yeah, yeah, having a history really helps. You know, it, it definitely does. Like the whole culture around it grows from history, which is why, like, um, I mean, this is this might be a little off topic, but uh, you know, the English football in general for men and now for mm -hmm. women. Um, are leap years ahead of us because of when they started off and i think, yeah and i yeah. think indian football also has a lot of history where there was like a period in between where for some reason um not enough investments were made not enough interest grew or i don't know there wasn't enough publicity um mm -hmm. but yeah i think once the history is deep it's very hard to catch up so yeah 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 so I think you you've played across like multiple levels. Like you must have played under thirteen, under fifteen, under seventeen. So what like yeah. what we want to know is what was that? Oh shit! I'm actually pretty good at this moment in your life. Um. So I don't think there's one particular moment that stands out. Um. But I think I knew that I was good. See, like I said, I was naturally athletic. Um, so for me, mm -hmm. picking up sports was anyways, I, you know, I was sports captain in junior school and senior school. Um, I won the best athlete. So for me, athletics in sports was generally like I was good at it. I had like a flair for it. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, as far as football is concerned, I, again, we came from, I mean, I'm amongst the first crop of girls that started playing in Delhi. Um, mm -hmm. So for us to sort of beat other teams that were sort of cropping up uh, wasn't like huge. Uh, because it was pretty common for us, uh, but yeah, yeah, with the with the number of goals that you know I was able to score or assist and stuff, I knew that obviously, um, 
clearly I do have a talent uh, for the sport. And I think if there is one, not moment, but one period that uh, really stands out to me and sort of solidified that for me was um, uh, there were very few schools, I think, over the years that started a girls team finally. Uh, but we used to have to travel to Ajmer. The uh, Mayo College, mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. Mayo College had a girls' team around the same time that we did, um, or they were mm. they were building one or something, and they had a nice ground where we would go and yeah. stay with them overnight and play a few matches and then head back. Um, and that period, because we did that for a few years back to back, and when we used to play against Mayo, um, you know. I mean, I really enjoy that period. And I just remember doing very well as a player uh, and being like a feared player on, on the field for sure. And I think those sort of moments really sort of solidify in your mind that you, you do have, um, you know, scope here. And that, yeah. 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 And I think, you know, so I have the, oh shit, I'm good moment every night, but I'm not actually good. So I think that's where the difference is. <laughs> but... You know, so uh, again, like we, when we were researching for the podcast, we were reading up about, uh, you know, your story. One thing that actually stood out to me was how on Wikipedia it's mentioned that Tanvi Hans is a play, is a football player of British descent. British descent Correct. Yeah. Right. And then we saw about, then I read about how you were not uh, allowed to play for the under-19 Indian team because of the British passport and the British citizen, citizenship that you held, hmm. hold. Hmm. So... Could you throw a little bit more light about what happened and how, if that, if that incident, you know, lit a flame in you to, you know, just decide ki, hai, if not here, then I'm going to go somewhere else, but I am going to play football professionally. Yeah. So, um, so like you said, uh, you know, I have been playing in different age categories. So while I was in Delhi, um, I played for the under 14 team and the under 16 and senior team. Um, at the different age categories. And at that time, mm-hmm. I, I held a British citizenship as well. Uh, but at that time, they weren't very strict on checking people's passports and stuff. <laughs> you know, I mean, we're talking about a good, like, what, uh, 15, 15, 17 years ago. So um, they mm-hmm. wouldn't check every player's passport. Um, yeah. So for me to play for Delhi wasn't an issue. And I did. And like I said, the Vasan Valley School was the first one in Delhi to have a team. So our Delhi state team to a very large extent, comprised of our school team. So <laughs> that's sort of, yeah, that's sort of how it, it, it started for me at the national level as well, because our first under-14 Delhi state team was basically the Vasan Valley team and two or three, uh, and two or three Sri Ram girls. Um, yeah. <laughs> that's it. That was a Delhi state team. And this is the first exposure that we had. And we got absolutely thrashed because we had no experience at all. Um, uh, but yeah so I continued to play at the different age categories without any problem and and perhaps that's why I was called for the under 19 team because you know they'd spotted me or whatever Um, and this uh, uh, the camp happened in uh, Gwalior I remember Mm -hmm. Um, and I was there for a good month Uh, I just started my first year of college at JMC and uh, uh, I was in Gwalior for a month with everybody and I think I was doing fairly well uh, you know was making it through the lists and everything and then finally they they came to me and said that unfortunately because of your citizenship you can't go on to play for India um, so that was obviously a big big it's it did definitely define yeah. what happened after that um, mm-hmm. but um, for me I don't really remember particularly being bummed out um, okay. I, think, I think for me really I think I would yeah. be stopping <laughs> no so, so for me I, I don't know why exactly I wasn't very bummed out because I think for me I just at that point wanted to play um, I hmm. just wanted to play and I was just going with the flow and I have ever since I was really small I just had a very very strong connection with my gut feeling um, hmm. and I sort of uh, I don't know I just sort of trust the tide a lot um, and uh when that happened, I remember obviously being disappointed because, you know, you. I guess I could never know for a fact that if I would have made it to the national team or not, you know, till date. Um, mm-hmm. I think that fact is a bit of a bummer. Uh, but I remember going back and immediately starting to play with the boys again. So I just wanted to play. With <laughs> and any chance that I would get, like, I, w- I just wanted to play. I wanted to get better. I wanted to compete with the boys and all that stuff. So all those things continued anyways for me. Um, yeah. So I think what what... Uh, the fact that I couldn't go on to play for the country, where that 
uh, came into the picture again was once I finished my three years at uh, Jesus and Mary College, um, mm-hmm. I wanted to do one year of master's in England um, mm-hmm. after that. So, um, you know, I went to Exeter University, which is in the south of England, like I said. Um, and again, when I decided to go to JMC and I decided to go to Exeter after that, football played like the pivotal role in my decision making. Um, so mm-hmm. I don't know if you know this, but even JMC till date is like the un- yeah. champion of yeah. University. That's even deal, yeah. yeah. Un- like till date it's undefeated yeah. so for me even back then they you know had one of the strongest teams um and that's what helped me decide to go to jmc and then after jmc uh, for me to go to exeter i did my research on their football team and then sort of decided to go um clearly like <laughs> the course was like secondary <laughs> nature. um hmm. but uh, yeah i did my master's in management also because once i retire i want to get into the management of football and stuff um yeah. But that one year that I played in England, um, you can imagine the facilities, the coaching, the structure there, the the competition there. Everything is just, you know, like tenfold, like better than anything I'd experienced yeah, yeah. at that point, um, you know. Uh, and I knew for a fact that, um, I mean, on one hand, I can't go on to play for India and I have my British citizenship. On the other hand, I'm absolutely loving my experience that one year that I had in England to play, even at university level. Um, mm. And I figured that, you know, why why see the uh, the national thing as a negative? Why don't I use it to my advantage? Um, mm. And after my one year at Exeter, I came back. This was in 2012, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, 2012. Um, and I just sat down with my dad and I said, uh, dad, I've heard that there are some open trials that happen at some of these clubs in London. Um, Mm. and you know, I have my citizenship. I can't go on to play for India. Um, at least until the dual citizenship law is there or something of the sort. Um, so why don't I give a shot uh, at some of these open trials? Um, and I think I've been very fortunate because my parents have been very supportive and my dad Mm. instantly said yes. Like there was no like mm-hmm. hesitation even on his on his side at all, which is great for me. Um, he probably but, knew how fucking good you were, so, so he's so, just like go for it. So funny thing is that I I remember asking him what it was um, that made him like say yes so instantly because it's not very common to have like you know him girl go from Delhi and uh, play like pursue like a football career in London on her on her own. Um, hmm. And I think uh, I remember what he said, and I think I tell this to a lot of girls and boys who come to me, and they, you know, they say my parents are not supportive. What do I do? And I, I always come back to this moment, and I just tell them that this is what my dad said to me in that moment. Um, he said that the reason that I'm, I'm supporting you is because I see the hard work you put in. I see that you're yeah. actually, you know, you're working hard for, for what you want. Um, hmm. and you know one way or another you'll make it happen and like before we wake up in the morning you've already returned from your training and stuff you know so we're seeing the hard work from your time from your side and the support from our side will obviously come naturally yeah and I think like from the whole story that you told about your under 19s and everything what stands out to me right now is like what I'm witnessing is how much you actually love the game for the game itself yeah and yeah. like you said ki as soon as i got out of the under 19 camp i went out and played with the boys and start, and continued that and that just shows us how how much you actually love that game also one slight question which might be off track but i really want to know this is since you were a part of vasant valley who yeah. basically thrashed everyone 405060 and then you went on to be a part of jmc who literally thrashed everyone with a similar score line yeah what did that first loss feel like whenever it was like did that hurt particularly because you weren't like you weren't ready for a loss like you'd never faced Um, one before no so we had definitely like i said when um when we went and played nationals when i represented we got thrashed in like double like we got thrashed 17-0 21-0 which is nuts that means you caught like every three four minutes you know, so, uh, so yeah, I definitely faced like uh, my fair share of like, uh, you know, losses and failures yeah. as well. Um, on a personal front, though, um, I remember having a big um, blow 
uh, my ego when I went to <laughs> when I went to England and played for that one year at university level. And I think that's really when my fire uh, sort of uh, really stood out to me because um, uh, here I am, like you know, playing in Delhi and perhaps one of the more prominent players uh, in Delhi. And then I go to England and I was, you know, I wasn't selected in the first team. I was selected mm-hmm. in the second team, in the reserve team. And yeah. that was a good mm-hmm. blow for me. I wasn't used to that. Um, and I remember like just like constantly going to the coach there and saying, you know, what can I improve on? Tell me. And, you know, being like really passionate and things. Um, and then um, I remember I worked really hard. And finally, after two matches, um, the third match, then I was... Uh, Part, I started becoming a part of the first team. Uh, and I was benched for a while until I had to prove myself and I was finally playing again yeah. with the main team. But yeah, that, you know, that whole... Um, so I, I have definitely faced my uh, share of, like, you know, failure and losses and things. And I think that's so important. In fact, I remember doing my first push-up when I was in England. <laughs> um, because <laughs> oh, I really? just, Yeah, because I was... Um, I just was honestly so dependent on my natural athleticism my speed and the natural skill that I had yeah. uh, I never focused enough on my physicality like strength. my strength yeah. yeah um and I was just getting pushed off the ball by these English girls um at university level and and that's sort of when I woke up every morning then and did push-ups and sit-ups and everything and um yeah that that all started from there yeah. So, yeah, um, so when I came back after my master's in 2012, sat down with my dad and, you know, fortunately, he was all on board. Um, I remember approaching my coach, um, Chibber, sir. Um, so you might know Dalima Chibber from the national team. Yes, 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 we so do. her dad. Her dad yeah. has been like my coach since 11th grade and he's like uh, been a second father to me. Um, mm-hmm. So he, uh, I approached him and I told him, sir, there are these trials that happen, please train me. And because he was like my second father and he saw a lot of potential in me, he trained me for free. Um, and I think I've been so fortunate to have coaches like that along my journey who really trained me pro bono, you know. Mm. Um, and he was definitely very, very important in during that period. Um, and he made me strong and he made me even more athletic and things like that. Um, so for that period between the end of 2012 till about June of 2013, this is about five, six months. I did not have a social life. I was basically <laughs> just, just training, training morning and evening. Um, and uh, yeah, and then, you know, I landed up for trials in June um, and gave trials to three different clubs. And I remember being completely on my own. I did, I, I'm, now that I look back, I'm pretty proud that I managed to do all that on my own. I did not even know like the city of London well. Um, so it was all very new to me and, and you know, in, and all in a competitive environment as well. Um, but yeah, like uh, fortunately, like two out of the three clubs liked me. One of them was Tottenham. Um, and yeah, then, I mean, I played with them for two seasons and then changed to Fulham um, for a year. And then I came back to India in 2016. So 2013 to 16, I was basically playing there. Yeah, yeah. I, I want to know, like, what's it actually like for, like, a women's player in the UK? Like, uh, in terms of both, like, the financial aspect of it and yeah. the life that you'll be leading in terms of, like, practice sessions, two, three, like, two sessions a day, three sessions a day, strengthening and the training and the drills, everything. Okay, so... um. You know, Tottenham right now has just signed Alex Morgan. Alex Morgan, yeah. Uh, Insane. I know, I know. I'm I'm really thrilled for the squad. And I know the manager, Karen, has worked her ass off to get the team up to where they are now. Uh, But at that time, you know, when I I trialed for um, for Spurs, uh, they were in the third league. So, okay, so the league system for women runs a little differently than men's. Um, So, you know how men have Premier League, which is, you know, the most elite, um, you know, the top of the top. Um, yeah. in, in this game, you have the Super League 1, the Super League 2, and then the Premier League. Um, okay. So, at that time, Spurs women's were playing in the third league. Uh, and then after I left, I think a year or two after I left, is when they got promoted to the Super uh, the Super League. Super League, yeah. Yeah, correct. Um, so, yeah, I mean, and ever since then, they've just sort of, I think, merged a little bit more with the men's team. And so, uh, so now they're being 
uh, supported financially as well and that's why they can do signings like Alice Morgan now um and <laughs> that time they were definitely like a team that was trying to sort of uh you know uh, build weight and push into the higher leagues um and uh, so yeah for me i'll speak about my experience um because at that time there were such few teams i think probably you could count them on your fingers um that you could actually say were professional teams like the girls would mm-hmm. just, uh the players would just sort of uh supported by the money they were getting from playing uh there was yeah. a very small group of those players and uh just a handful of teams um up in the first two leagues that could actually do that uh, and could say that uh now of course that's changed and i'm so thrilled um at that time every player in my team including the first team players uh including the reserve team players including the development team players and everyone had a job on the side or was studying on the side yeah mm. that was just how it was um and mm. you know and, and then how would you manage all the training with with the second job or with uni okay. so the training trainings were all scheduled in the evening so okay. i remember coming back home at 10 pm on training nights you know um and my journey also to the ground was like an hour long you know and you basically have your job in the morning or you study in the morning and then you go train in the evening and that's okay. big. that's why i think um, you know the kind of respect that i have for women who play in general um so much because just to sort of you know continue down that path there's so much else that you have to do um but yeah so that's how it was we used to train in the evenings our matches used to be held over the weekend so a sunday every sunday we'd have a match um mm. and of course you'd sort of work or uh study during the day uh and that's how it was and even at that you know even with that it was so competitive um so i'll i'll sort of uh explain something that might uh be helpful uh might shine some light uh when i went for trial um and you know i did well because i'd been training for so many months uh and everything um it stood out and i think the reason why i got selected even was uh because like i said um i was very athletic so my stamina my speed um you know my skill in general it all stood out because at the end of the day you do have to stand out as an individual at trials right um and i was able to do that and so i got selected the actual uh, challenge for me then happened actually began after i got selected because um i was from delhi i had very limited experience in actual matches uh, mm. and my my uh, maturity as a player wasn't as good as the other girls um on the team uh, right. in fact when i went for trials i was already 23 years old uh turning 23 years old when i when i went for trials and i'm competing against these girls who are 16 17 years old who have come ripe and ready out of a very rigorous uh, academy system you know um, and these girls get scouted at like 8 9 years old and they have matches every weekend for 10 months of the year from that age so you can imagine by the time they're 16 years old how many like matches they've already played and how much match experience they have and here i am someone who gets to probably play like uh, 11 a side maybe like six seven times in a year but i am very athletic you know um yeah. so i think what helped me stand out was um that aspect but then once it put me in a game situation i realized that i needed to obviously grow a lot in terms of my uh, um match yeah. intelligence yeah um and that's um that's basically what those 2 3 years that i spent in england really really helped me with you know uh, and i had to really catch up and uh, whatever the other girls were doing i had to just do it like like just 10 times better you know in order to just catch up and sort of um absorb every little moment that i was there um because i didn't have like the background they did um so yeah i mean uh, that's sort of how it's, it was uh you work and then you play um and yeah so this was part 1 of two parts of our conversation with tanvi hans catch part 2 very soon where we talk about her venture sister in sister in sweat uh her being a Ni- her nike athlete and her being the captain of the parikrama girls team along with the karnataka state team 
कैच पार्ट टू ऑन संडे एट फाइव पी एम फॉर मोर अबाउट तनवी हंस